As an occasional crossword puzzle constructor, I've been asked by friends and acquaintances, where do you even begin? A surprising number of people have wondered more specifically, do you start by writing the clues? It's kind of a crazy question, and to illustrate why, I'll show you how, in fact, a puzzle is made. A standard newspaper-style daily crossword is 15 squares by 15 squares. Some of the squares are white, those are the ones you fill in, and some are black. The pattern that the black squares form is symmetrical, but it's not left-right symmetry, and it's not top-bottom symmetry. It's also not diagonal symmetry. What else is there? It's what's called rotational symmetry. In other words, if you rotate the grid 180 degrees, the pattern of the black squares will appear exactly the same. Some puzzlers call it crossword symmetry. Now, most crosswords have what's referred to as a theme, three or four or five answers, often the longest answers in the puzzle, that are somehow related. In general, if you want to make a crossword puzzle, that is where you begin. You have to come up with a theme. Let's take as an example a puzzle I wrote for the New York Times. What do these three answers have in common? Yesterday's news, a thing of the past, and ancient history. Well, let's look at the clues I wrote for them. It's old, it's very old, it's very, very old. Not bad. And if you notice, in a three-part theme such as this, the top and bottom answers have to be the same length in order to obey the symmetry. Fortunately, yesterday's news and ancient history are both 14 letters. As I mentioned, a theme could have four parts, which might look like this New York Times puzzle that I wrote. Undercover agent, sworn to secrecy, and spread out over two answers, if I told you, then I'd have to kill you. The theme is pretty self-explanatory, but note that the top and bottom answers must be the same length, and the two middle answers must be the same length, again, because of the symmetry. Similarly, with this five-part theme that I wrote, these two are the same length, and these two are the same length. All right, let's go back to that first example. Now that I have my theme in place, I need to build out the grid, that is, create a pattern of black squares. You could choose any pattern you want as long as you observe one written rule, all answers must be at least three letters long, and one unwritten rule. It's considered inelegant to use too many black squares. Here's the pattern I chose. Rotational symmetry dictates that if I put a black square four rows from the top and one column from the left, then I have to put a black square four rows from the bottom and one column from the right. Again, the result is that if you rotate the grid 180 degrees, it looks the same, only the letters are now upside down. So let's rotate it back. Perfect. There are three things left to do. First, fill in the rest of the grid with words, like this. Next, put consecutive numbers in all squares that begin a word. And finally, write the clues. It should be obvious now why writing the clues first makes no sense. You wouldn't even know what you're writing the clues for. It would be like mapping out directions before you have a destination. So, come up with a theme, create the grid, fill in the grid, and write the clues. The hardest part is coming up with a theme. It's got to be interesting, it's got to be novel, and it's got to work with rotational symmetry. Good luck! Thank you.